Okay, some writer. We're going to read chapter 11 about Trumpet of the Swan, which is a book you guys will read going into fifth grade next summer for your summer reading. Um, this summer, I think you guys should read Stuart Little. That'd be fun. Then you will have written all three of the important books. All right, Trumpet of the Swan. The quote is, in almost everyone's life, there's one event that changes the whole course of his existence. By fall of 1968, Catherine was in poor health. So that's his wife. Medical bills began piling up. Andy needed money. Even though Charlotte's web had sold very well, when Andy signed the contract, he agreed to take only a portion of the sales each year. The rest of the earnings were being held by the publisher. Probably in a sock somewhere, he said. He decided to write another children's book. And that's the way it is. The author gets a portion of it. The illustrator gets a portion of it. The publisher gets a portion of it. Um, hopefully you can, if you become a writer, you have to just fight hard to make the best deal possible. An article in the New York Times about, about trumpeter swans gave Andy an idea for a story about a trumpeter swan born without a voice. Andy named the character Lewis after the jazz trumpeter, Lewis Armstrong. He later wrote a young reader that the young swan Lewis, like him, needed money. Andy had never seen or heard a trumpeter swan, but he learned that there was a swan family living on Bird Lake at the Philadelphia Zoo. Since Philly was the home of his old friend Cush, who called Andy Ho and himself Hum. So they're such good friends that they call each other Ho Hum. Andy wrote him a letter. Dear Cush, how would you like to do some sleuthing for an aging fiction writer? So sleuthing is like detective work, spying. I'll, I've never visited the zoo. What does Bird Lake look like? Is it pleasing, ugly, small, big, what? Are there any trumpeter swans in residence today? Like, do any of them live there? How many? And now a sudden switch, nightclubs. In what general area of Philadelphia would one find a night spot? Nightclubs were like jazz clubs where live bands play. That's why he's asking because he's, it's going to be a trumpeter swan, like the jazz trumpeter Louis Armstrong. So go forth, old friend. Case the gardens for me. Tell me how they smell, what they look like. Examine the swans on Bird Lake. Love ho. To prepare yourself for this pro preposterous task, you should probably bone up on some nomenclature. That means names. A male swan is a cob. A female swan is a pen. A baby swan is a signet. And there's a picture of a trumpeter swan by James Audubon. Audubon was a naturalist who did tons of books on different animals. And we have a, some of those in the library. Now they use um, photographs, but in the olden days, Audubon drew, done, drew tons of pictures to identify animals. Before long, Cush had sent Andy the results of his research and some photographs. Andy wrote back to Cush. The snapshots from Bird Lake are an inspiration to me, and I'm encouraged to go on. Andy did more research for Maine. In his story, the young signet, Lewis, stays at the Ritz Hotel, which is a fancy hotel, and orders 12 watercress sandwiches from room service. What would that have cost? Andy called a friend who worked near the Ritz to find out. Unlike what he'd done with his other two children's books, Andy did not set the story aside to see if it needed changes. And here he's writing to um, Ursula, who is the children's editor, to see if she'll publish it. And he writes, Dear Ursula, this morning I sent off the manuscript to you by registered mail. It's called The Trumpet of the Swan. It's about a signet that has a speech defect, along with other problems, including a money problem. If you think the book is promising, let me know. If you think it's lousy, I'd like to know that too. The trumpeter swan, largest of the American waterfowl, was once almost extinct, but has made a comeback. This book is about a young trumpeter. And then it turns on this page. It explains that she did like the book. They tried to get the same person who illustrated um, Charlotte's Web, but he had moved, so they get another illustrator. And then he asks his neighbor to do um, a watercolor for him because he has an idea of what he wants the cover to look like. 
and then he sends it to the publisher. And then I'll show you what the, this is what the real cover looks like. So the publisher used that, uh, the illustrator, sorry, used that sketch to make the cover. Um, that's just a quote he has in a portion of the story. And then here it talks about the reviews came out really strong. Um, and there's a little bit more of the story, which you guys will read. And here's one review from a really famous author who said he did a great job. So um, he, he started being so excited because he knew it was going to do great. And so that's how Trumpet of the Swan got published. Okay, I'm going to stop, but I'm going to come right back to this chapter in a minute.